of Barcelona. They take all three points. Speaking of Xavi, he caught up with our Sid Lowe after the match. It felt like after the goal you conceded that there was maybe 10 or 15 minutes that were a bit chaotic. It was a bit difficult to get control. Did, is, is it hard emotionally for a team to respond to that kind of blow? Yes, when we concede a goal, yes, emotionally we are not uh, in the best moment, but uh, I think we play so well. Uh, we, we don't play bad today. So I think positionally, especially uh, we did an effort, they did a, a great effort, especially in defence. So they defend really well. Uh, we couldn't attack in the in the best uh, in the best uh, uh, position, but I think uh, uh, it's, it's the very very well deserved uh, the victory today. And what kind of state do you think the team is in now for the return of the Champions League? Do you do you feel like this is a team that can compete in the Champions League? Today is very important these three points because uh, we give today confidence, morale to prepare now Champions League, and we are ready. We are ready to compete in in round of 16. Well, he's not lying. At least in terms of how important the three points are. Barcelona, three points now, clear of Atletico Madrid and up into the third spot in La Liga. Still seven points back of your league leaders, Real Madrid. Here's a look at the bottom half of the table. He missed opportunity for Celta de Vigo. Still above the relegation zone, but not by much. For more on this, let's welcome into the show Luis Garcia, himself a former Barcelona player. What do you think of what Xavi said there, Luis? Barcelona deserved the victory today. You agree? <laughs> yeah, 50-50, let's say it this way. I think the Xavi needs to continue sending that message of uh, positive uh, about uh, the team, trying to create that momentum. It's true that I think that the first 45 minutes put more uh, dominant into the game, but uh, didn't create much. Uh, I think that Celta Vigo was very well organized. Xavi mentioned it, very compact not allowing much. And in the second half, we saw a totally different Celta Vigo, more proactive, uh, committing more players up front. And I think they deserve a little bit more than nothing on today's game. It's true that in the last part, it was about that penalty, but Barcelona really in the last part of the game didn't create much. We saw um, Rafinha getting involved into the game. We saw La Media Madrid was one of the most active players, but in the end, no many crea chances created, no many shots on target, and it was a Celta Vigo controlling the, uh, the last part of the game. So, yeah, he might send that, that message, but I think that uh, it'll look uh, the other way. I think it was a, a more fair result to get a, a point for Celta Vigo too. Make the case they were pretty fortunate today, no? Barcelona? It's amazing what you see sometimes when you're stood on the touchline and you try to convince yourself because... <laughs> Well, he wasn't watching the game, he was watching the camera. There <laughs> that was game, anything so. but uh, a very good performance. To be fair, what's he going to say? I mean, he's got Champions League coming up. I mean, he can't bury the guys now, can he? Well, like, whatever he said, he said. I think if you watched the game, it wasn't a very, very good performance. In fact, uh, as Luis just mentioned, Celta Vigo come into the game in the second half, were creating chances, actually looked more dangerous. And it's not like they were hanging on mm -hmm. at the end. Yes, Bassa got that penalty, it was very slack kicking Lamine uh, Yamal when he was you know, on the blind side. Uh, and that can happen. But it wasn't like Barca were just pummeling and balls in the box, shots at the goal, and Celta Vigo were hanging on. It wasn't like that at all. So uh, they got a little fortunate in the fact that they got, you know, they got the penalty, which was correct. Then he got two bites at the cherry because the goalkeeper was off his line, uh, Lewandowski. And they get the three points. But it, it, it was anything uh, but convincing. And it was, it's not a performance... And I wasn't expecting to be, Seb, a performance where... And I think this is going to be indicative of between now and the end of the season. Something you go, wow. If they'd have been playing like this early in the season, maybe they would have been in this title race because every time we watch them play, uh, in La Liga in particular, it has been very pedestrian this season. No matter who plays, there's been a lot of changes. Some youngsters come in, some fresh legs, some experienced players, a bit of a mishmash. Whoever plays in this Barca team it has been very one-paced. And that was evident again here uh, in this match today. A lot of people think the uh, league is done and dusted for Barcelona. There is still, of course, the matter of Champions League. They got Napoli in the round of 16. First leg Wednesday in Napoli. Luis, how do you fancy Barcelona's chances in this showdown? Well, after what we've seen in the past uh, few games, uh, not the big hopes, uh, to be honest. I think that uh, even though they're in Napoli, are not arriving in the best moment. They are nine on the Serie A, not having the best of the seasons. They're still having a lot of players up front 
Osimhen looks like he's not going to be involved, but still having Chelinski, Kratelia, uh, Napoli on the on the right side, a lot of players who can be very dangerous. And something that Barcelona is struggling is uh, how vulnerable they are at the back, how many mistakes they do on the build-up, also uh, missing uh, maladjustment uh, because of lack of communication. So that's a big problem for Barcelona. Arriving to to Napoli and try to keep a clean shield looks right now impossible because if they haven't done that in the past uh, two months, it looks like it's going to be very difficult and that's what you need to, to, to try to be focused on. Not conceding, arrive to Barcelona and try to, to finish the, the, the knockout and, and go through. Um, I'm going to go for a 51-49% of, uh, of possibilities for Barcelona because I think that they got to still have a talent and because Napoli is not the right moment. Also, because Oshime is not going to be right there, so it's also a, b- a big positive thing for Barcelona. But still, it's going to be, I think, a very even uh, competition. Mm-hmm.